Hello again, guys. Think this is a record more than one video in a week? Yeah. I had a present show up at my doorstep not too long ago, and I thought I would show it to you guys first because it's actually Linux related. This is the Parrot AR drone. It is a quadcopter, and it has a little tiny board inside of it, and it's running a version of Linux on it. I don't really know much about the specifics of it, but this was sent along to me to test out some potentials of this other device that I've been working with the NVIDIA Shield. Um, not going to go into much about it today, I'll do more on that later, and most of it probably over on the XDA channel, but there is an app to control the Parrot AR drone that has some exclusive features that work on the Shield, and so I thought I would do a quick demonstration and hands-on with that today. Now essentially what you do, you load up the application on the Shield or on whatever Android-based device you want, I think it also works on iOS, and then you connect to the wireless access point built into, again, the AR drone. It has a wireless chip inside of it. It sets up its own access point. Very, very cool stuff. And from there, you just control it. You tell it to take off. You tell it to land. You use the camera built into it if you want to do that. Uh, you use the on-screen controls if you're using a device that doesn't have any. Or with something like this, you use the built-in sticks. Very, very cool stuff there. And also just one thing to sort of mention, you may have noticed it has all these propellers that are sort of flopping around. Not terribly safe for indoor use, but that's why it also came with this little guy. This fits over the top of it in place of that initial styrofoam shield. It goes around all the blades and makes it much safer to fly indoors, although it is still kind of loud and not exactly recommended, but you can fly it indoors that way. I've done it a little bit myself here in testing. But I think without further ado, let's go ahead and take it outside and we'll give you the initial run through and, and just show you how it works and everything. All right, and once I've paired everything up to the wireless built into the device, all I have to do is hit piloting inside the application. It shows video from the device live. So I hit the takeoff button and here in just a second, we're off the ground, we're ready to go. And then it's a simple matter of using the sticks on the shield to actually control the movement back and forth, left and right, and then up and down. I can even spin 360 just by holding the right stick in a circle. And if I hadn't mentioned it before, the quadcopter actually comes with a uh, built-in 720p video camera that I can control using the, the screen on here. I can actually see full-time what's going on and record it directly and stream it directly to the shield from here. So as long as you're not doing silly, silly things like this, it could be somewhat usable footage, although it does get a little bit loud from time to time. Uh, it's not, it doesn't have any built-in audio, so I'm having to use the microphone audio from this. But still, like I said, could be usable. And actually, I've done lots and lots of testing with it at this point, and it's very, very easy to control. It can be a little wibbly-wobbly with the wind, but when you're indoors, again, it's not a problem. You just have to kind of watch out for things as you're flying around. But when you're outdoors, you've got lots and lots of room to go. It's supposed to have a, a range of about 150 feet, I think, 50 meters, something like that. Um, the, the biggest problem I've found with it so far is battery life. But when you give this to a, a brand new user, someone who's not familiar with it at all, and someone who's never flown a helicopter before, you, uh, you just hand it to them, specifically with the shield. And because it's controlled entirely through the sticks, it's such an intuitive interface that they just immediately latch on. Uh, as you can see from this video, I, I, put, I gave it to my friend John for five minutes and said, here, go for it. He said, well, how do I fly it? I said, just use the sticks, hit that button to take off and he was ready to go. He was flying it all around the yard, had no problems with it, short of just some depth perception issues, I think. He almost took out the tree at one point or took it out on the tree. Now, realistically, the biggest problem I've had with this thing so far is the battery life and doing some reading around online, there are some modifications you can make to it. You can replace the bearings inside of the spinning blades and that will allow you to, to get some slightly less friction, which will let, make the battery last a little longer. The battery life is actually only about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 10-ish is on the low side. Um, when you're using the camera built into it, of course, the time is going to be even less than that. So if you're wanting it to last for a really long time, either try to find a third-party battery, which I'm, I don't know anything to recommend at that point, or just don't record. <laughs> that's, that's going to be one way to extend it a little bit, and you might look into the ball bearings for it. It is a little bit pricey. It's a $300 device, not something that I would have paid for myself, but it's an awful lot of fun. The kids love to play with it, and yeah, I can I can see having, you know, 10 minutes of fun here and there, and then recharging it, and then have 10 minutes of fun again, and yeah. And like I said earlier in the video, you could actually use it for like a, a third-party B-roll kind of thing, a behind-the-scenes cam, maybe. 
I, I could see someone using it as a spy cam, but it's going to be really loud and that's not going to happen. But anyway, it's just a lot of fun and controlling it with the shield makes it very, very easy. So that's really about all there is. Very cool to see an, a Linux-based device uh, being controlled by an Android device and, and it's just sort of mixes all really well together. That's going to be about all for me for today, though. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye, guys.